Hey guys, so today we're going to be creating a shooting system in Unity in first person. As you can see on the screen, we can shoot, it spawns the bullet holes, we'll play the animation, and as you can hear, it also shoots. Here we have a project with a first person template from Unity, which you can find the link to it down in the description, along with a link to all the tutorial assets we'll be using. So the first step is to go ahead and import that. Once you drag in the Unity package that's inside the RAR file, just go ahead and click import. Now that we have our tutorial assets imported, we want to go to them and go over to the animations folder and we're going to create a new folder called base controllers. Inside this folder, we'll create another one called firearm. And inside this one, we want to go ahead and create a new animator controller, which we're going to call firearm-base. Then we want to create a new animation clip, which we're going to be calling idle, duplicate it and call it shoot. Open up the firearm base controller, drag in idle, drag in shoot, and then from shoot, we want to make a transition over to idle. Select the transition, and we want to leave the exit time enabled, but this I'm gonna move over here, and I'm just going to like make it shorter. The next step that we need to take is go ahead and create the actual override, which we're going to go to the AK folder, right click, and we're going to go over to animation and create an animator override controller. This we'll call AK. On the controller, we're going to select the firearm base, and you can see that we have the slots here for the animations. For this, we're going to open the AK anims file, then we'll drag the idle animation, and we'll drag the shoot animation. But we want to make sure that the idle is set to be looping, so it doesn't just stop once it ends. So select the AK anims file, over here go to the animation tab, select the idle animation, scroll down and where it says loop time, enable it, and click on apply. We now want to go over here to our scene view, and we want to drag in the AK texture prefab over to the main camera. As you can see, this already comes texture, and the last thing that we want to do is disable the capsule, in my case because I'm using the template. This will automatically automatically get rid of the weird shadows on the gun. We'll now go ahead and create our actual bullet hole prefab. So if you go to the tutorial assets folder, go into bullet hole, right click and create a new material, drag in the texture and enable alpha clip. You could also do this with a decal projector. I'm just doing it this method because this is what works best for like every single pipeline. Go over to your hierarchy, right click and create an empty game object. Inside of it, go ahead and create a new plane. In this plane, we'll go ahead and assign the material, and for the size, we're going to give it a value of 0.005. The last thing we want to do is give it a slight offset of 0.001. The reason for this, you can see it on the screen, it will just clip through the wall. Now, we could do this with a decal projector, but the reason I'm not doing that is because I wanted to make sure that it works for every single pipeline. Let's go back to the tutorial assets folder, and over here, we're going to create a new folder called scripts. Inside of it, go ahead and create a new script called firearm. In the firearm script, we're going to go ahead and delete this for now, and we want to start by creating our variables. But first, we'll create these sections for it. So go ahead and create three headers called one stats, sounds, and references. The first stat that we want is the private float fire rate, which we're going to give it a default value of 0.09. Then we want another private float called range, equals to 500. Then we'll go ahead and create a private boolean called automatic. This will define whether a weapon can shoot semi-automatic or automatic. We'll now create a serialized private layer mask, call it shootable layers. Then create an unserialized private boolean called can shoot, and it is crucial that this is marked to true by default. Under the sounds section, we only need a private audio clip called shoot sound. And under our references, we'll first need a private animator called anim. Then create a transform called shoot point. Then create a private game object called it bullet hole prefab. Next, we want to go ahead and create three new functions. The first one will be called update. The second one will be a private void called shoot. And then the last one is going to be a private I enumerator called reset fire rate. You will see that this function gives you a error, and this is because we gotta right click and add the namespace system.collections. Then inside here, we'll begin with this. We're gonna do can shoot equals false. Then we're gonna do yield return new wait for seconds. And inside the parentheses, we're going to pass our fire rate. Then when this has passed, we're going to say can shoot to be true. Over on the shoot function, we're going to first check if we can shoot. So if it's not can shoot, then we want to return. We now want to do a raycast hit, so we're going to do if physics.raycast. And inside the parentheses, we're going to pass shootpoint.position as the origin. Then we'll pass shootpoint.forward. This will be our direction. Then we'll do comma out raycast hit hit. 
comma, then we'll pass the range, the shootable layers, and finally, we're going to tell it query trigger interaction dot ignore. Basically, this is saying that we cannot shoot objects that are triggered. That is an object that we can just go completely through and has no collision. Inside here, we're going to instantiate our impact. So we're going to do game object impact equals instantiate parenthesis. And inside of it, we'll pass the bullet hole prefab comma, and then we'll pass it on the hit point for the position. Hit that point comma. And we're going to do quaternion dot from to rotation parenthesis and we're going to pass vector 3 that up comma and we'll pass hit that normal what this does is it makes sure that it aligns with the actual surface that we shot at then down here we want to do destroy we'll pass the impact and then we want to do comma and give it the time that we want to pass in seconds until it destroys in my case i'm just going to use 10. We then want to reset our fire rate, so we're going to do start core routine, parenthesis, and quotes. And inside the quotes, we'll pass the exact name that we use in our enumerator. The last thing that we need to do is play our effects. First, let's do the animation. So we're going to do anim.crossfade in fixed time. For the name, make sure to pass the same name that you use for your shoot animation. In my case, I use shoot. Then we're going to do comma and pass the transition time, which I recommend 0.1. For the sound, we're going to do audio source that play clip at point and in the parenthesis we'll first pass the shoot sound and for the position we're going to pass transform that position then we're going to go up here to the update function and we're going to do if input dot get button down parenthesis and inside quotes and we're going to do fire one which equals our left click and is not automatic then we'll go ahead and shoot copy this line of code make an else and then paste it and instead of get button down we're just going to do get button and we're going to do only when it's automatic this basically does that we only tap fire if we're if we're not automatic and we only hold fire if we are automatic. Back in Unity, we now have to go ahead and grab our AK. We're going to add an animator component to it. For the controller, we'll use the AK override controller. Then we'll go ahead and add a firearm script. And over here, we can set up our firearm. I will leave these values as they are, but I will make it automatic and make it so we can shoot everything. For the shoot sound, the tutorial assets already have the AK shoot sound. For the anim, we'll just drag ourselves. This is basically the reference to the animator component over here. And down here for the shoot point, I am going to use the camera. And for the bullet hole prefab, I forgot to make a prefab out of the bullet hole. So just drag that over here and then select your gun and go ahead and drag it in. In the game view, if we shoot, you can see it plays the sound, the animation and spawns the bullet hole. We have a fully completed shooting system. Like, comment and subscribe. And I will now go fix my mess of a project.